How the hell are you now? <laughs> now we're powered up in our fan. I was told it was fancy dress night. Who dressed up? All right, good to go. This is my clown evening wear. I read something absolutely marvelous and mind-bending, and I, I wanted to share it with you. I know some of you have heard, decided to already start drinking, so I promise I'll keep the scientific portion of it really simple. But I read this thing that was amazing. The universe is full of these particles. And I know you know this part. You know, they're atoms and subatomic particles. And if you put them together, you make stuff. That's what stuff's made out of. And you put those together and you make things, and really complicated things can be people. That's kind of awesome. That's all the stuff you know. This is what I didn't know. It made me go, whoa, and changed everything. The idea that those particles have a little repulsion to them, a little force field around them. And that means right now I'm not standing on a stage freaking out in front of all of you. I'm hovering here. It's science. And what's more than that is that I've got all of these, you know, the atoms, they come together, they click together, and then they repulse, and then they lock in, and they make these lattice work, and that's how we get stuff and things and even people. And stuff and things and people. And so, let's just say it together and get it done. Stuff and things and people. Fantastic. Very well done. Sure. So, we, we got all these particles, they're repulsing, and they're going, and they make a lattice work, and that's how we get all that. Don't do it again. We'll never get through it. But those bonds... No matter you, I mean, you could beat the crap out of me, and someone will before the end of the night, I'm sure of it. But when you push me around, those bonds don't break. In fact, if you actually manage to slice through those bonds, bad thing, catastrophic result. Catastrophic, boom. I wonder, I've been working a lot with kids lately. And that's actually been one of the things I've been working on with the Circus Freaks. We've been doing educational programs. We've been doing uh, performances for children. We've been doing all of this stuff that we've never done before. We, uh, prior to that, we were vaudeville late night where it was safe to be stupid. And suddenly we had a responsibility to pay attention to what we were saying. Yeah. This is not that story. <laughs> that's for later. So I realized what would happen if someone had come to little me. Now you got to realize before I was a clown, I was really pissed off. But before that, I was a child. I know it's shocking to some of you. But same haircut, just smaller. Just, yeah, just same, just whole thing, the same. So the thing is, I was a kid, and I wonder if somebody walked up to me and said, hey, you're superhuman. I don't mean you've got superpowers, but you're super because you're human, because all humans can fly and have force fields and have doomsday powers like atomic bomb blasters. Well, that's what I just explained. You weren't paying attention, it happens. So I've been thinking about this, and it's ridiculous, the idea that we all have these powers. We all have this. I've been looking at kids and, and, and trying to realize that there's three types of kids. I've been performing three types of kids that either get this or don't get this. The first kids are the young ones usually, but sometimes we get lucky, we see an older one where they have no experience, they know nothing. So everything is magic. You walk up to them and say, I'm the Princess Urbino. And they go, well, how's Versailles? If they're really smart. If not, they go, okay, why, why do you wear a big dress in Texas? Can I buy you a pair of jeans? <laughs> this is a true story. This happened at a show. So then you get them, you get them educated because you want to help them. You get them educated and they suddenly learn something about science. And they think they know something about science and they see a juggler come out or a clown come out and do something stupid and they go, magnets and wires! which isn't true because that's not how juggling works, but hey, <laughs> at least they were trying to apply what they learned, right? Yeah. This is good. No, and I, and I encourage this. I want, people, I want people to be for that idea. Then there's where it can twist and go kind of wrong. And this is, this is the only time I will ever stand on a soapbox. <laughs> the idea that we should be teaching kids to deduce and analyze and think is great. I ask one question to anyone who ever interacts with a child. If you have kids, if you teach kids, if you even meet kids, why the hell do we take the wonder out of it? I, said, I don't even know the answer. I don't know. But I know, thank you, there's a thousand reasons. A, a camera, you're probably not getting this, but we're, we're hearing a murmur of someone taught it, did it to us first which is anger and revenge, and you're absolutely right. And over here, we're getting applause from someone who's an educator. And we're getting all of these responses, because everyone's got a different take on this, but we're still screwing it up. I'm not saying we're teaching wrong. I'm saying we're teaching kids not to wonder. I walked out with stilts, and everyone, stilts, knock him over and eat him, kill him, jump on him. 
not, but one little kid who looked at me and said, you're really tall, what's that like? I said, find a chair and see for yourself. And he ran away ready to perform his first perception experiment in being tall. And he climbed up on a chair and he's gonna go figure out the universe. We hope. <laughs> could, go, could go the other way. Could end up here talking to you. <laughs> it's tough to say. It, you know, you gotta start somewhere. Here's the, here's the, the bottom line on this. When you, when you come all the way around, we get together, we learn these things, and then we forget them. We come back here and we're trying to figure them out again. I think the little kid who goes to school who, who kind of drags his feet and gets beat up and eats his lunch without even tasting it is probably not going to grow up to do anything great. But if we were able to walk up to a kid in that state of wonder and explain that for the first time in history, someone took a piece of bread, a piece of bread, some peanut butter and some jelly and put it together so they could have the food that will change culinary history for anyone under the age of 10, they, I think they would fly to school. And when the bully beat them up, when the bully beat them up, now they get bruised and they get screwed up, but they would go, my force field's gonna keep me together through all this. And maybe on the other side of that, they can put the safety on the doomsday. And the next time they encounter something, we don't even know what it's gonna be. They're gonna encounter something. We don't know what the hell it is. It's gonna be some everyday thing because we've lost our sense of wonder, but they're gonna see it. And because we showed them that awesome things are everywhere and that they're superhuman, they're gonna change the world because they've got a different way of looking at it. I don't know how you got here tonight. I flew as best I could. Some of you walked, some of you had to be dragged here. Some of you stumbled in lost and met us for the first time. God, I'm sorry. <laughs> but here's what I can tell you. If you know how to fly, teach someone sitting next to you. If you don't know how to fly, the reason we stood you up here, the reason we stood you up here in Reggie the Riot Act is so we go, okay, you can have a sense of wonder again. We'll take care of being the grown-ups, and you figure it out. In the safest place I know to do it for grown-ups, the open stage. Welcome. Woo!